The biggest story of the 21st century is the emergence of a truly global middle class. You have hundreds of millions of people, soon to be billions of people, coming out of poverty for the first time, looking around, beginning to have ideas about how the economic system works, how the political system works, how they communicate and associate with people, the role of religion in government, all, all of those things. If you look at what's happening in the Maidan, in, what was happening in the Maidan in Kiev, you look at Tahrir Square in Egypt, you look at Rio last summer, Bangkok over the last couple of months, or even the less reported on events uh, uh, that are uh, bubbling in China. This is the effect of having people move into the middle class, move up Maslow's hierarchy of needs, and begin to have ideas and opinions about how, uh, uh, how the world should work. Uh, and this will shape the world that we all live in 10, 20 years down the road. The majority of middle class people in the world are in the United States and Europe. That will change dramatically over the next two decades. The U.S. and Europe by 2030 will be maybe a quarter of the total global middle class. So what we're trying to do at the Pew Research Center is understand who these newly empowered populations are, understand what their values are, understand what their expectations are, understand what their frustrations are, because those will drive what the world looks like in the future. We all know that from the last 200 years of history that the middle classes drive history. Now what I'm going to show you here this morning uh, is based on a poll of 39 countries that we did last spring as we started to ramp up this program. But I hope uh, that these, uh, uh, these, this polling data that I'm about to show you will give you a sense of a number of things. But one of them at the top of the list is, you know, there's a tendency in this country in particular to think that as people around the world move into the middle class, they'll adopt values similar to ours. And I think what I'm about to show you will make very clear that is not the case. And so understanding what their values are is critical to understanding where we're headed. Let's start with economics. And really, I see this as kind of the quintessential question of middle class aspiration. Do you think children will live better than their parents? And what we saw when we did this in the spring is that the advanced countries have, have lost that optimism. I'll show you some detail of this, but across the board, they've lost that kind of optimism about children living better than their parents. But optimism in the emerging countries has gone through the roof. And even in the developing countries is very, very high. I think part of this is the effect of of uh, communications and media. People know what's been happening in China over the last two decades. They see this phenomena playing out around the world and they think, well, it can happen here too. So you have a very high level of expectations in the developing world. And then you see what's happened in the US. We're down to 33%. In Europe, of course, it's gone through the floor. Uh, France, now only 9% of people think children will live better than their parents. Inequality. So one of the fundamental values of the middle class in this country has been this notion that was articulated by John Kennedy that a rising tide will lift all boats. That we're not going to get upset about inequality as long as the economy is moving in the right direction. As the middle class emerges in these emerging markets, we're not seeing that sentiment at all. As you can see from this, you've got 67% of the people we polled in emerging market countries saying that inequality is not just a problem, but a very big problem, something that they prioritized uh, at, at a very high level. And, 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 and these numbers, to me, raise fundamental questions about uh, the security of capitalism and, and, a, and a belief in free markets uh, in the emerging world. So they're very optimistic about the future, but very concerned about the distribution of wealth. And that has obvious implications going forward.